Hello, everybody, and welcome. Good afternoon, Facebook fans. We are live from the Facebook offices in central London on International Women's Day. My name is Greg James, and today I'll be joined by British actor and UN Women Global Goodwill Ambassador, to whom International Women's Day means a lot. Last year, she gave a very memorable speech, uh, an incredible speech, a sensational speech, really, on gender equality, launching the He For She campaign. Please join me, everybody, and make a lot of noise for the wonderful Emma Watson. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Well, that's a lovely reaction. We haven't even said anything yet. I know. I haven't said anything. That's really good. Thank you all so much for coming, and thank you very much for watching. And thanks for getting me involved. It's a real, a real honour to be part of this. Um, I watched the speech when it was um, we did it in September, and I, I felt absolutely compelled to, to do something. So I was really happy to, to be asked to get involved. Um, thank you. Great to have you here. Are you feeling well? Are you are you good and happy? I'm good. I'm a little nervous, but I'm very excited. I'm very, very, very excited. That's this good. Is, this is amazing that Facebook have done this. It's, it's well, so cool. So your Facebook fan page has just passed 30 million fans. I can't even, I can't even wrap my head around that. 30 That's million is a lot of people. Insane. Yeah. That's so many people. So a lot of people are watching That's this so many people. Um, right now. And you, and you keep up to date with your fans. And that's, you, you like the conversation between you and your fans on there. I really do. I think it's been such an amazing tool for me because I can instantly and directly share things that are really important to me. And um, it's really personal. You know, it's, it's, it's really nice to be able to do that. Really nice. Do you get so. addicted to it because you just, there's so much conversation <laughs> the whole time? And it's um, just... I do get a bit addicted, actually, yeah. It's, um, it's so nice because you, you get instant feedback to things. And, um, and particularly with he for she I'm so interested to see you know, what you guys think and what, you know, and it's, it's so nice to see things that I'm saying, like starting debates and conversation. And um, I love seeing how, you know, all of that um, unravels, really. It's, it's really fun. Well, the video that you put up to talk about this specific conversation was viewed 17 million times. I mean, that's, that's crazy numbers. So a lot of people are watching today. And by the way, if you have got questions, please put it in the comments and we can try and get to them uh, as the conversation goes on. We have so much to talk about. So let's, let's get started. We're live at the Facebook offices today um, and uh, we'll, we'll get some fan questions later, mm -hmm. um, which we'll have time for. But I want to talk about that speech that you did on the 20th of September. Now, obviously, talking at the UN mm. is uh, an incredibly nerve wracking thing to do, I imagine. I mean, yeah. I can only imagine. Um, yeah. I haven't actually spoken at the UN yet. <laughs> they, haven't, they, they haven't asked me yet. But what, what was the, the mission statement? What, what was going through your head in the morning of that speech? What was the mission statement you wanted to get across? Um, I guess I really wanted to communicate that gender equality, historically, has been predominantly a women's movement for women. But I think the impact of gender inequality and how it's actually been affecting men hasn't really been addressed. Um, so I really wanted to make that one of the clearest messages in my speech. And I think also our society in general devalues the she. And you know, when I say that, I mean qualities that are associated with the feminine, which are found in all of us. Uh, and as a result, there's kind of this, this imbalance and this distortion and it's just hindering our progress. It's, it's causing discrimination and violence and pain and fear the world over, all the way, you know, all over. And um, I just wanted to desensitize people to the issues and make them feel that they could be part of the problem and that, that they can make a difference and to give people a voice and a platform with which to do that, with which to um, make change. Um, so it's quite a lot to fit into into eight minutes, but <laughs> I did my best, tried to cram it all in. Um, yeah, it was difficult. I, I really wanted to try and reach as many different people as possible um, in a very short space of time. Um, and what were the immediate yeah. reactions from your fans and from the people that know you? What, what were the reactions after that speech? What, what was said immediately? And how did you feel after you'd done it? Did you feel like you absolutely got every point across? Did you feel that that was... That was a nice, a, lo a lovely moment. It, it for the felt like one of the most surreal moments of my life, I have to say. I remember at the end of it, seeing people start to stand up, and it was 
like something from a dream or a film or I thought maybe I'd died and it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was, it was just really surreal. I can um, confirm you didn't die. I didn't die. No, um, no. But kind of, a little bit, I felt like I could, I just sound really cheesy, but I felt like I could sort of die happy. Like I'd sort of done kind of what the most important thing I might ever do. Um, I, I had, I had, I, would, I was shaking, I was so nervous, <laughs> but at least I, I got it out there. Like, I'd managed, yeah. to, managed to voice the words, I'd managed to, I'd managed to get it out, and that was big. So you, you talked a lot about um, inviting men to help fight sexism. Mm. So what was the reaction from the men around you and, and your male fans? What, what were they saying? Um, it was really touching, because I, I got a lot of emails from, you know, my peer group, so guys I was at university with or guys I was at school with, but I got a lot of emails from men I'd worked with. Um, you know, there was just a real, uh, the demographic of men that I reached, it was sort of like everywhere from my dad and my dad's friends all the way down to my little brother Toby, um, you know, being, being all about it as well. So I was really, that was really cool. The, the support you got from other celebrities was also mm. uh, incredible and there was a, a huge drive mm. of pictures on social media and all the rest of it. Who were the ones that you were most proud of reaching and, and you were so happy that they were joining in this campaign as well? Yeah, we, I mean, just incredible. I had, I had like a personal letter from the Archbishop of Canterbury and, <laughs> you know, I had, you know, it was just mad. It, it was amazing. Um, but, but, you know, we have also had... Um, we just actually launched a new program called Impact 10 by 10 by 10, and we have these impact champions who are piloting he for she programs within, you know, whether it's their government or whether it's their school or, or their business. And um, we've actually had the country of Sweden, uh, the country of the Netherlands. We've had Sierra Leone, uh, Unilever, PwC, Barclays, Tupperware, Sun University, Oxford University. Yes, um, and um, and we're announcing a lot more uh, on March 10th. I'm not allowed to say who those other people are but we um, I mean it's just incredible to have to have that kind of support you know on those kind of levels um, you know and then and then all the way down to um, you know I've had I read a letter from a 13 year old boy this, this morning um, who was you know equally as passionate as the CEO of uh, Unilever so <laughs> that's that's amazing and it's only been five months I mean that's I think that's the yeah. other thing is it's, it's well I feel, I feel like it's made a huge impact in those mm. five months and it, obviously it's very important that that your fans and the general public are getting mm. behind this but you do need those corporations to help push those yeah. messages home so it's, it sounds yeah. like everything's going pretty well so far it is it is and yeah I think you know in terms of male reactions I think men have been like, yeah, we're on board, but now we're not really sure exactly how to help. It, it can be, they're a little bit, still a little bit fearful and still a little bit confused of, okay, so how do I, how do, I do this exactly? <laughs> um, and I guess I'd just say that, you know, even the small gestures to the, to the really big ones, it, it all makes, it all changes and impacts somebody else's life. So I saw one thing good. that I know you're very excited about was Steve Carell, who wore the he or she cufflinks at the Oscars. Now, I wanted to talk to you about this because I, he's kind of my hero, <laughs> and I know he's, you're a big fan of him too. So what was it like to see it in action, to see that people were just, it was, that, that's a very subtle but lovely thing to do, isn't it, mm. wearing, wearing some cufflinks. So yeah, things like that must, you must make you go, okay, things are happening. Completely. You know, I, 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 um, I had no idea that he was going to do that. And then, um, you know, it's just, it's just so overwhelming and humbling when men want to show their support like that. It's just, it's just so nice, it really is. And it does spread awareness and, and it does make a difference. And you know, even if like two people on that night asked him what his, like what, what is your cufflink? What does that mean? What is that? And he said, oh, well, you know, I am taking a stand for gender equality. Yeah. You know, that, that in itself, it's, it's huge. It, so what are some of the things that you're asking your Facebook fans to do to be part mm. of He For She? What are, the, what are some of the things that they could actually, you know, take part in or do? Well, uh, first off, um, <laughs> I have uh, an amazing number of male Facebook fans, and I'm, I need to check the number because it's so many, it's so crazy, <laughs> I can't even believe it. But, um, yeah, we only have 200,000 uh, commitments on heforshe.org. So, Facebook fans, one thing you can do, that's 
right now even, if you want to, is go to hebshi.org and make the commitment. We still, we still need more men signing up on that petition. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's definitely, um, that's definitely a, a really good way. And, um, you know, and then I think, it's really cute. I asked my, I asked my younger sister this morning, I was like, what would be the one thing, what would be the one thing that you would want from, from the boys in your life, from, from the men in your life? And she just went, she went, I just want them to want to play with us. Like, I just want, <laughs> I just want, you know, and, and again, I was like, well, that, that translates at every level. Like, we just want to be included. We just, you know, we just want, yeah, we just want to be included. I was like, well, yeah, it's really very concisely done that. And then for, for women, I think it's really acknowledging or, or feeling comfortable or confident enough to acknowledge that there is actually a problem. Mm. Um, because uh, it's uncomfortable, it's awkward to, to acknowledge that there is a problem, but we need to understand that we are complicit. And um, another sort of anecdote is that, um, you know, a, lo a lot of the, um, yeah, just a lot of the criticism I've ever had in my life, some of the harshest moments of criticism or some of the hardest moments I've had have been um, comments from other women. And, you know, it's, it's not just enough to ask men to come in and support us. We, we really need to support each other. Mm. Um, we, we really do. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I would say being brave enough to acknowledge that, that things aren't there yet and, and also, um, you know, supporting each other massively. You talked a lot about in your speech for the UN um, about the term feminism. Mm. And, uh, and I suppose making sure people understand what you mean by that and what yeah. people mean by the term feminism. But, uh, I mean, what, 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 what's your understanding of it and what did you want to try and put across? Because there's lots of people, I, don't, I think lots of people don't know what that necessarily means. And, it, and I think you said something like it was a, not a dirty word, but mm. it was a word that people are afraid of using. Mm. And people are reluctant to use it. Mm. Why do you think that is? Because I think people associate it with, with hate, with, with man hate. <laughs> and um, and that's, that's really negative. Um, and I, I don't think that's what feminism is about at all. I think it's actually something incredibly positive. Um, so I think that's why women became very reluctant to use that word. Mm. Um, but I think that's changing, which is really cool. Uh, I've, I'm aware of a lot more male feminists now yeah. than I was a few years ago, and it's, it's really heartening. Um, people have come back to what the actual definition means, uh, which is equality politically, culturally, socially, yeah. economically. That's it. But even if that's that, simple. If it, even if that small message gets through now, yeah. I'm, let me try, I'm, I'm trying to remember what I was like when I was 15. Yeah. So as a 15 year old boy, mm -hmm. typical teenage boy, <laughs> if someone said to you, are you a feminist? I'd yeah. go, well, obviously not. Mm -mm. But I think yeah. that, that, but now it should be, yeah. you know, uh, if, if by that you mean, I would like men and women to, to be treated equally, paid the same, and you know, all that kind of thing, I, I would say, yes, I am a feminist. But I think that's a very simple thing for people to try and grasp hold of. It is. I, I think um, men think it's a women's word, that it's only women, yeah. it's only for women. Um, but it really just make, means that you believe in equality. And if you stand for equality, then you're a feminist. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> you, you you're a feminist. I'm sorry. You, you're a feminist. That's it. So from this, this point on, what, what are the things that you're going to be working on in the next few weeks, next couple of months? What are the, the next targets for you? <sighs> next targets for me? Well, I'm going to harp on about this, but again, you know, getting more men to sign up to the petition because 200,000 is just not, we're not there yet. We need, we need more signing that petition. Um, so that, and then, and then really it's, it's working on the impact 10 by 10 by 10 and, um, you know, we've had this amazing groundswell of support and now we want to empower people to be able to take action and, and make change and actually, you know, translate that passion 
into, into really doing something. Mm. Um, so we're trying to support people with that, and we've been collecting um, he for she stories. So people have been sending us their stories, and I spend for hours reading these. They are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sending them in. I mean, it, it's, it's just um, really heartening, actually. I go to bed at night feeling really optimistic about um, the state of affairs in the world because I can see that there are people that really want to make a difference and it just, it's really cool. Who are the people that inspired you, the, your, the, the, the females in your life? Yeah. Maybe ones that you knew, your family, but also the ones that you watched on telly or you read, things that they've written. Who are the people that inspired you? Um, well, it's Mother's Day soon, so I guess the obvious choice is, is um, my own mum. Um, she was a single working mother. Um, she's also a type 1 diabetic. Um, so seeing her strength and resilience um, was really inspiring growing up, really inspiring. And I think she instilled in me, you know, particularly in my teenage years when I was feeling very insecure and confused about what my purpose was. Um, she really, really instilled in me that what I was thinking and what I was doing and what I was saying were ultimately infinitely more important than my physical appearance. Mm. Uh, even when the world was really telling me the contrary. Um, so, and she really, she really encouraged me to be an individual. I remember her being thrilled when I got my first attention. <laughs> because she was, she was really worried, I think, that I was going to be a bit straight-laced. What, what was it for? Oh, I failed the last one exam. Yeah. <laughs> you fa you I failed, failed an exam and I, that was an attention. Yeah, I failed, I, well, I think I failed it a few times, actually, maybe more than once. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's not go into that. But no, but I think she did. She wanted me to be my own person, and uh, she thought a bit of rebellion was, was a good thing. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how failing my last one exam was rebelling, but... We'll say, we'll, <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, so, yeah, my mum, she's awesome. Yeah. She's a great lady. The UN, obviously, is a, 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 a huge organisation. And when they approached you, did you approach them? How did it come about? So, um, I, I had already been working for, I'd already been working for Fair Trade, for a Fair Trade company, which was... Um, supporting women abroad so that they had sort of economic independence um, and then I was also working for a charity called CAMFED which provides scholarships for girls in countries where they wouldn't normally get to go um, usually it's boys that get sent and girls don't get really past primary school education so um, so I've been doing work with that so I think they, they knew where my interests um, where, they, where they lie and uh, they, so they reached out to me, and then we sort of, I had this amazing conversation with, with um, Elizabeth, who works for the UN, she's in the audience, and um, it was really just a meeting of minds, because she said, well, you know, we have this thing called he for she, and it's, you know, and I went, oh my god, you know, it's completely my take on feminism, but we need to be including men in the conversation, we need to be including them in the dialogue. I have four brothers, I can see gender inequality is affecting them just as much as it's affecting me. We need to open up the dialogue. We need to give men a space where they feel that they can talk about this issue. Um, and she was like, well, that's what it is. And she gave me the baton and I've kind of been running as hard with it as I can ever since. Um, so it just kind of felt very like, very meant to be and I was clearing out my room um, a few months ago and found you know essays I'd written when I was essays and diary entries I'd written when I was 15 and I can sort of see with hindsight that that speech had sort of been gestating in my head for, for, for a long time and um, I mean I never thought I'd be working for the UN I mean, it's just amazing but um, I think it felt like that when we watched it I think people would agree if you're watching in, in here I think, I think people would agree with that that it's been percolating for yeah. quite a while so what were the things when you were growing up that you couldn't but in hindsight you now go that mm. was unfair that was not that was not cool what were the yeah. things that you would want to change initially if there was one thing you could just stamp out right now would there be something I mean I've been incredibly I've been incredibly lucky. I really have been supported um, and, and, and had access to just a lot of opportunities that women in other countries probably aren't. So 
you know, I, I would never complain about my, my personal situation. But, gosh, I guess it's just, I think it starts young. I think it starts really young with girls and boys being told what they have to be and it can just be really damaging. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult because I, I have been incredibly fortunate and, I, I, you know, I think um, just, just encourage and include each other. Don't try and sort of ostracize each other and, yeah. and, uh, and, and just don't, just have an open mind and, and don't have expectations based based on on the gender and, uh, or the sex you see Absolutely. you see in front of you. I mean, there was a BBC report today just about the fact that in maths and science and engineering and you know all of these other subjects that girls just aren't aren't doing as well. And and the biggest reason they say for that is because these are generally associated to be male male subjects. And so um, women or young girls feel that if they did those subjects, they would be inherently less attractive. And, you know, that's, that's another example of, you know, dispel that myth, mm. you know, like, it, it, does, it doesn't need to be like that. It was interesting what you said about your brothers um, mm. experiencing gender equality. Yeah. Um, in what way, I mean, not specifics necessarily, but what, in what way do they, have they spoken to you about it from a male perspective? I think there's a lot of posturing that goes on um, with with men, and I've just had my brother say to me a few times that he's just like, I just can't be around the way that some of my guy friends talk about girls. It just like I don't, I'm not sure they even know what they mean when they're saying it, but it's like they're imitating something. They're imitating this this thing that they think they have to be. This, this male idea and he's like I just feel really constrained by that and it really upsets me um, I had a very similar letter from um, a man in the military who said that he experiences that a lot um, it's uh, I think we don't acknowledge how much pressure we put on men to conform to a, to a certain perception of, of masculinity um, I, I don't think we do um, so, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice to hear that, and seeing how upset they get when, you know, for example, after I gave my speech in September, I wasn't going to talk about this, but it's coming up. Um, you know, there there was a website that was set up threatening to release naked photographs of me. Uh, uh, you know, with like a countdown and, and whatever else. And I, I knew it was a hoax, I knew, I knew the pictures didn't exist. But I think, I think a lot of people that were close to me knew gender equality was an issue, but they didn't really think it was that urgent or particularly, you know, we live, we live in, in Great Britain, you know, this, isn't a, this, is, this is a thing of the past, Gen, you know. Um, oppression of women, it's, it's sort of, we're fine, aren't we? We're good, we've, we've got far enough. And then when they saw that the minute I stepped up and talked about women's rights, I was immediately threatened. I mean, within less than 12 hours, I was receiving threats. And I think, I think they were really shocked. And, and particularly one of my brothers was very upset. Um, so I think it was just a wake up call of like, oh, this is like a real thing that's really happening now, like now women are receiving threats um, in all sorts of different forms. Mm. That was just, one specific one and I think I was upset that the media immediately reported it as fact without any evidence to the contrary um, and and you know and it, and it really just publicized something that was really really negative um, but it, it, I mean if any it's funny because people were like oh she's gonna be disheartened by this <laughs> if anything it made me so much more determined yeah. I was just just raging I just I was just it made me so angry that I was just like this is why this needs to be this is why I have to be doing this this is why I have to be doing this um, so it, if anything it it's um, you know it, it actually if they were trying to put me off it 
<laughs> did the, <laughs> the opposite. opposite. Yeah, where was it? Absolutely. Well, there's a wonderful <laughs> message to the. So it was a despicable thing to do, but mm. you know, as, as you say, nasty things happen all the time, and it's yep. the way you deal with them and the way that you can channel that into, into something Completely. Something channel better. that energy. Channel, channel that anger. That, channel that anger. Absolutely. Channel that anger. Um, I, th I thought it was absolutely fantastic when you were talking about... Uh, I, I kind of... I, I, uh, I wrote down <laughs> some notes, actually, when I was watching it. Because uh, I, I wrote down the, the aggressive versus submissive kind of argument mm. you know, between boys and girls from a young age. Mm. And also, you, you talking about both being free to be sensitive and strong. Mm -hmm. Male, men and women. Yeah. And where were you when I was 15 and needed <laughs> someone to say that? Do you know that is because I yeah. I've always been a massive softie. Mm. I love Coldplay. I'm, 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 I, re I really Amazing. I need, need but you know but when you're surrounded if I, I played a lot of cricket, mm -hmm. played a lot of sports for school and you have a lot of lads 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 and that was yeah. not something that I really liked yeah. particularly. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it needed, I think, I think that's a really powerful message to, yeah. to everyone watching this now who's going through, uh, going through puberty, going through those teenage years, which are so difficult, they're mm. so horrible, aren't it they? You so don't difficult. know what you are, you don't know what's going on. So I think someone like you standing up and saying things like yeah. that is really important. And you must feel that from your fans, the feedback from people must have been, yeah. thank God you said something like yeah. this for us. Oh, I, yeah, I hope so. I mean, I'm really genuinely disturbed by this idea that men can't cry. And, and, like, and that they can't, they just can't express themselves. They can't talk about how they actually feel. That's, I think that's actually the saddest thing in the world. <laughs> it's so bad. I it's can cry, believe me. Excellent. Like, um, on, just, on demand sometimes. It's crazy. It's what makes you human. Yeah. How, like, how you feel, being able to express yourself, being passionate, being emotional. It's what makes you human. It's not what makes you a girl. It's what makes you human. I mean, it, it's, you know... It's, if you've got a beating heart and you care about things, that's great. That's so good. Um, so, yeah. Good, yeah. Let's good. move on to some fan <laughs> questions, shall we? Yeah. Um, so what happened was uh, you put, Emma put on some, uh, put on your Facebook fan page, give me some questions and I will try and answer them. Mm. There were so many questions <laughs> that um, what we decided to do was we looked through them and just thought of the, the big themes okay mm -hmm. of, of the question so we'll okay. we'll start off with um i'll start with this question here so um the he she supporters would like to know how gender equality has affected you personally and have you been discriminated personally against uh because of your gender and if so how did you deal with it good question well um yes uh <laughs> Um, I have. Um, you know, I, when I was looking, I was going through comments that were sent in for this, for this Q&A, and um, <laughs> most of them were really thoughtful and, and, and great. And then, and, then one, and then as I was going through, one popped up, which was just, Emma, why aren't you in the kitchen? Um, I went, hmm, okay. Uh, interesting. And, you know, it's interesting because when I was younger, my brothers actually used to say things like that to me because, as a joke, because they knew I would get, I would get riled up. I'd get, I, you know, they'd get a rise out of me, basically. And so I was thinking about this. I was thinking about, you know, when do you engage and when do you not? Uh, and, and how do you have a meaningful dialogue on, on this topic um, when perhaps one isn't, isn't really being wanted? And, and so... I guess what I would tell my younger self if, if someone said that to me then uh, and, you know, uh, and how I feel about it now um, is that I know that I'm not alone in this fight, um, that it's an education problem and that it's it, in the not too distant future, I really hope that most people will be horrified by a comment like that as opposed to sort of mildly irked. Um, and so I guess, you know, it's just, I have a much calmer conviction now, I think, than I used to when I was younger. I mean, I still, I still, it still does upset me, and it's good that it upsets me, because it, it should, but, um, you know, I think I know the difference between knowing when to, knowing when someone wants to have, a, you know, a meaningful 
dialogue about gender equality and, and when someone just, just, you know, just wants to get a rise out of you, I mm. think. There, were, there was quite a lot of discussion about gender equality in the developing world. Mm. Um, and that's obviously a big, uh, a huge problem, as we mentioned earlier, about the, the, the traditional route in mm. many countries would be for boys to go to school, secondary school, girls not to. Mm. How would you, how does that make you feel, first of all? And, and what would you like to see over the next few years? Gosh, I just, I mean, first of all, if someone had told me that my brother could go to school, but I couldn't because I was a girl, I just would have been so hurt and so baffled and so, why? Um, and the fact that this is still going on, you know, the world over, uh, really, it's something that really needs to be addressed. But I guess I just say, how and why are you not recognizing the potential of that girl? Wh why are you not recognizing what she can bring to the table? Mm. And um, we need, we need yin and yang. We, we, we need that balance. And we need female representation. Uh, we need female leadership. Um, women, women have so much to offer. We're such an untapped um, part of, of, of this world. So much potential just gets wasted because girls aren't encouraged in the same way that men are. We can, we can achieve so much. It's, it's interesting because I, I literally this morning came back from a comic relief trip in Uganda mm. and, we, and we were focused in a, in a village called Iowa, which is a, they've put a new health centre there, part of comic relief. And, um, <laughs> And it was a, a, an absolutely fascinating experience and visiting some of the local schools and things mm. to see that there were many, many girls there. That yeah. Things are changing, but mm. it just need, it needs campaigns like He For She, I think, to really push this message home that it's, yeah. not, it's, it's a global problem. Yeah. But some of, one of the, ma the amazing things about the sign up of men so far to the website is that yeah. um, it, there's, there's, there's men in every country that have signed up to this. Yeah. So it is, it is reaching that global audience, isn't it? This? It definitely is. And, and you know, I think even in, even in Britain, you know, we have an equal number of women at university as men. But then at a certain point, we're just dropping out. We're just, we just aren't being encouraged into those leadership positions. We, we're just not, we're not getting past a certain point. And so, yes, it needs addressing abroad, but it still needs addressing here, mm. you know, in, in, in the West. We, we don't, we're not there yet at all. We've still got so much work that we need to do and, and that we need to pioneer. Um, what do you say to the people that message you on your social networks and say, someone said, I can't do an engineering course because I am a girl. And this is a, this must be, reg it's regular, isn't it? People say it these sorts regular. of things. It is regular, it is regular. Oh, just don't let anyone tell you what you can or cannot do or can or cannot achieve. Just don't allow it. Just do not allow it. Um, it's wrong. It's so wrong. Um, be whatever you want to be. And, and that's the amazing thing about social media is that, you know, whatever, wherever you live in the world or whatever conditioning or whatever the people around you might think. You can access a whole community of other people that think differently and that want to support you. And, you know, it was, that was a crazy moment for me. It was, you know, not really thinking. I just responded immediately to this girl who texted, you know, my dad says girls can't be engineers. And I just said, well, and what can I do, you know, about this? I said, well, go and be an engineer. Just go and prove them wrong. <laughs> you can do it. And, um, and then within, you know, a couple of hours, three or four different engineering academies, fellowships, whatever else, had, had contacted her and said, women can definitely be engineers, <laughs> and we'd love to help you do that. And that's amazing. That's so amazing. That's the amazing thing about what social media can do, is it, is it, is it connects people in the world to, to a community that they might not be able to access directly around them and, and helps them you know, think, think bigger. We have someone in the audience who'd like to ask a question. Where yeah. is Ella? Please, Ella, are you here? Now, hold on. We need to get you a microphone, otherwise, no one's going to hear you. So, there you go. Hi. Um, Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, media states that you earn less in your film roles in the Harry Potter series um, than Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert Grint. 
Is it true and how can we address the issue of unequal pay between men and women? Good question. Thank you. Interesting question. Thank you. Um, I don't think I would ever even dream of complaining about my personal circumstances. Um, but yes, that, that is a, a big problem in, in my industry, in the film industry, in the industry which, which I work. Um, currently, females comprise 7% of directors. 7%. 19.7% uh, are writers. 2.2% are producers, 13% executives wow. are women in the film industry. Um, and, and we know that, that when you have a female writer or when you have a female director, um, you know, there's a, there's a higher, um, you know, representation of women. Um, so, so that's a pretty huge, huge problem, um, which, yes, I need to, which needs to be addressed. So, yeah, thank you for the question. Those statistics are terrible. I know. That's I really, know. That's, I think it's really bad. It's really, really, really bad. I think we saw that acknowledged at the Oscars this year. I think there is there's an awareness, but you know, seven percent of directors are female. Seven hmm. percent. Why are we not telling women's stories? Why are women not telling their own stories? Directing their own stories. It's crazy. It's got to be done. So where does that start? Is it? I mean, obviously, he for she is very yeah. much men and women standing together, mm. working together to become, yeah. you know, for it, for it to be, for it to become a, yeah. a normal thing that everyone is equal. Mm. So where does it begin in, in tackling it in a thing like the film industry? How do you start that? Well, there have been moments when I've struggled with it in my own life as a woman, which is, for some reason, women are still in a place where we feel like we need to be given permission. Like, we, some, we need permission to be our full selves to use our full voice, to, um, to, to want to lead. Um, and I think that has to change with, with encouragement and, and role models and um, you know, just, just changing, that, changing that mindset. A lot of the comments that I read on, on your Facebook page were from a new generation of of activists, I suppose. So your young fans who have grown up watching you and you know been a fan of yours for many years, and they are a new generation. It who... makes me so happy to hear you calling my fans like activists. It's so cool They're because activists. it's true. They yeah, are. Yeah, they are. They are. They're a, a wonderful, um, powerful army, really. They, yeah. Um, seriously. And and but that can galvanise so many different types of people mm. as well. So a lot of the comments were sort of saying, "Okay, I'm on board." Yeah. What? Now what? What do you want me to do? Give me some, give me some instructions. Give me some instructions. So if, if, yeah. there's, uh, if there's boys and girls watching this right now, yeah. back to school tomorrow, yeah. what are the things that they can do? Are they shouting about things? Are they saying you shouldn't really talk about women that way? I, what, what are the things that they could do? The simple, everyday things. Gosh. Well, you know, it's kind of, I, think, I think people feel intimidated because they feel like they have to come up with like <laughs> some grand, huge scheme that you know, it's, it's not as complicated or intimidating as that, actually. It, it's, it's every day, it's individuals, it's, it's on a case-by-case -case basis, taking action, just doing something. Um, whether it's speaking up, whether it's, you know, just trying to change the way that, that someone else thinks about the, the issues. Um, it's, it's, uh, it can be done in so many different ways. And the stories that I've been, I've been getting are a testament to that. Mm. There's been some really creative ideas, which we're actually going to start publishing people's stories um, on the website of, of what people are doing and, and, and how they're choosing to help. But I, I can't tell people it, it's got to be your story. It's got to be how you personally can make a difference. Um, um, and it can be anything. And, and the, the smallest thing, the smallest gesture goes such a long way. It, it does. It, it really, really does. There were also a lot of comments about the, uh, about the dichotomy. Mm -hmm. That's a mm, great word, nice by the word. way. Yeah. Between, word between chivalry and sexism. Mm. Okay. And I think this kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, which is saying feminism. 
I'm, yes. a fem going, I'm a feminist. Am I a feminist? Am like I a feminist? man saying, am I a feminist? I don't know what that means. And I'm treading on eggshells around yeah. the whole thing. So there was a lot, a lot of people were sort of saying things like, as a, as a woman, would you be offended if a man opened a door for you? Mm. And there's a lot of people who think about things like that and go, well, I, I mean, they're worrying oh, maybe about the smallest issues. Panic. There. But what, how, would you, how would you feel? <laughs> um, because yeah, I will base I, what I do when we leave here <laughs> on, on what your I answer. say now. Okay. Yeah. okay. No pressure. Just to let you know. Um, I love having the door open for me. I love. I mean, isn't that just polite? Isn't yeah. that just nice? Isn't that just a nice thing to do for someone else? I love having the door open for me. <laughs> I love being taken to dinner. It's so great. Um, but I, I think the key is, um, would you then mind if I open the door for you? Absolutely in not. In the corridor. No. Excellent. I'm lazy. I well, would then love that, that works great. Yeah. That just I'm polite and you're polite. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're making the world a better place with this small, kind, polite gesture. <laughs> it's great. And again, you know, I've. Um, I actually took a man out for dinner, and I chose the restaurant, and I offered to pay, and it was really awkward and uncomfortable. I'm just going to say that <laughs> it was. He was not. It was not going down well. He was not. It was really? not because. Actually, I'm sure he would say he was a feminist, but he was just like, oh, this is a bit. I'm not really sure about this. <laughs> it's making him feel a bit touchy, which, I, which. But the cool thing about it was was that we were both willing to have the conversation mm. about why it was awkward or why it was uncomfortable or, or you know, like, you know, we were able to have this dialogue where I was like, well, it's okay. I, I'd really, I chose the restaurant because it's my favorite restaurant and I would love to pay, but, but next time you choose the place and you pay or whatever it is, <laughs> you're gonna split it or whatever makes you each feel comfortable. Yeah. But it, it's just, I think the key is like chivalry should be consensual. It, 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 both parties should be should be feeling good about that, and um, I think it's just a problem when people expect things to be a certain way, to follow a certain status quo. And it's awkward and it's messy, and we're in transition right now, and everyone doesn't really feel like they know what to do. But it's okay. Mm. Just just be willing to have that awkward conversation. It does come out okay in the end. <laughs> it does. It really does. Also, Nando's is quite cheap, so you're probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> So I like Nando's. <laughs> I like Nando's. Yeah. So I think we've I think we've, I think we've covered that one. Yeah, I think, I think we've got. I think we're good on that. Yeah. Politeness is great. I love politeness. But it's just politeness between chivalry. two humans, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. Yes. Would, that's the key. I would equally open the door for a man, and I would, you know, equally that's fine. Just be a, a polite. I would have been brought up well by my mother, and yes. she would say, and "Open the door for someone. Hold the door open for someone." This is key, and I and I would do the same. Okay. A lot of questions on the Facebook page in the comments uh, about LGBT community, mm. okay? So the Hebrew campaign, um, in, your, in your statement, mm. we, uh, there were p people who watched it and thought, okay, great, but what about my community? Mm. What about people around me mm. in, 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 in my life? Um, so how will the Hebrew campaign benefit the LGBT community? Okay, really good question, really important question. So, um, he for she is about men coming in to support women and, and femininity and feminine qualities um, because they are currently valued less by our society. Feminine qualities are, are generally valued less. Um, and I think femininity, femininity needs to be embraced wherever it's found, whether it be found in a man, whether it be found in a woman, whether it be found in a gender non-conforming person. Wherever it's found, we, we need to be embracing it. Um, I'm also against racism and homophobia and classism and ableism and xenophobia and, and all of it. I mean, my specific mandate um, is to advocate for women and girls. I, I'm a UN goodwill ambassador for women. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to do that. But, but I also understand that these oppressions are interlocking, um, mutually reinforcing. Um, and the intersectionality is a really important word here. Um, and we just need to be supporting each other. Um, definitely, 100%. And, and I hope the LGBT community does feel included and does feel that this is their movement, because it is. It, it, it definitely is. Um, so I, if, the, if the UN Secretary General is watching this, um, my dream would be that I would be working for the UN Equality Agency, that, that gender equality would be 
such a thing of the past that that wouldn't even need to exist. It would just be UN Equality Agency, period. Full stop. Yeah. Done. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> That is the dream. There was a question that just flashed up a minute ago, actually, up here, which was, uh, I don't know where, it, well, it's gone now. Oh. It's, it's gone. But it was, uh, there it is. Oh. That was clever. How did you know what I was thinking? Wow. Um, it's Facebook, they know everything. Oh. It was, oh, it's <laughs> gone again, annoyed. great. It was basically a question which said, if you didn't do something now with this campaign with Heap or She, what do you think would be happening in 10 years' time? And what are your fears about, what are your worst fears about you know, in the next 10 years if this doesn't, if we don't make a stand now? Mm. I think, um, for some reason, we, we, we have this view, it's like, women have the vote in this country, you know, we, we're doing all right, it's, it's, it, this isn't, there's a lack of a sense of urgency around mm. this issue. And also, um, people not really understanding what a huge impact this, this issue has all over the world. I think it's probably one of the biggest contributors to poverty, to violence, to discrimination. It, hindrance, it hinders development, progress all, all over the world. Um, and, you know, just for example, I was, I was reading The Guardian this morning. As reported in The Guardian this morning, 85,000 women are raped in the UK a year. 85,000, that's where we're at. 16% gender pay gap. Parliament, 77% male. I mean, just tell me there isn't a problem here. Just tell me there isn't a problem. It just doesn't make sense to me that we, we're, so, we're so not there yet. At UK, the UK ranked 56th in the world for female political representation. We, we hopefully should move up to 36th in May, but it's still embarrassing. I mean, we're meant to be one of the biggest, most progressive democracies in the world. We should be at the forefront of this. We, we, should, be, we should be leading the way, and, and we're, we're straggling behind. We, we, we're not, it's just sort of stagnating for some reason, and, um, you know. Those figures again are, are, are ridiculous. So I what, know. Why, why has it got like that? This morning those came out. But do you think it's got like that because, like you said, uh, mm. oh, women have got the vote, it's fine. Yeah. Like, so that was, that was a, quite a while ago. Yeah. I think they think that gender inequality is, you know, I don't know what they think. It's, but it's, it's, it's definitely a problem. It's definitely a problem now. Um, and this is why there's something that came up. There's someone about... Um, you know, oh, first world feminism, that's, who cares about that? And I find this really confusing because I'm like, surely, um, surely I've been incredibly privileged and I, and I haven't been held back because I'm, I'm a girl, but surely it's therefore my responsibility to make sure that other women have access to the same privileges that I have. Surely that's, that's, that's surely it'd be bad if I wasn't doing this. Um, you know, extending, making sure that, that what I've been lucky enough to receive in my life is, is extended, is extended out, is it extended outwards. Um, so yeah, crazy figures, really obsessing figures. I wanted to yeah. address, I think we've kind of covered this, but I wanted yeah. to address it because it was talked about a lot on your Facebook page. Mm. But the, obviously it generated a lot of conversation when you did the UN speech, yeah. it was something crazy like 1.2 billion social media conversations yeah. i mean that's that's great that's a mm. great start mm. a lot of people were well, not a lot but there was a lot of criticism from uh, about the role of women in the movement okay right. so that was kind of all right well is this is this a man's club mm. type thing is this men saving women but mm. i think it's very important that that's not mm. the message from this campaign no. at all no no it's it's not about men saving women and it, it's um and uh, I think that's a misunderstanding. I think that's a misunderstanding. I think we're, women are already in the club. We're, <laughs> we're already in the club, and because it, it's it's our movement, it, it's our movement. Um, it, it's not a men's club. It's an equality club for both genders. It's an equality club for both genders. It's about men 
coming in support of women and women coming in support of men. It's, 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 it's both of those things. And um, Gloria Steinem actually, so cool, Gloria Steinem, Steinem gave a speech last week at a He For She event in New York. Surreal and amazing. And she, she used this really beautiful kind of amazing metaphor. She said that the human race is like a bird and it needs both of its wings to be able to fly. And at the moment, one of its wings is clipped and we're never, ever, ever going to be able to fly as high unless, unless you know, we're, bo we're both in support of each other. Um, it's, uh, that's it. I mean, we created He For She specifically at UN Women because we wanted to create a space where men felt that they were able to express what gender inequality was like for them because we, we knew that historically, um, you know, they hadn't been given that space. They hadn't been given that safe space. Um, uh, but we, we want them to be part of the solution and the conversation and we want them to be taking action with, um, with us and mm. we want to do it together. Yeah. Well, I feel like that, that's, a, that's a good moment to say, get yourself onto the website <laughs> yes. and, and pledge your allegiance, yes, really, isn't it? please pledge your allegiance. There's lots of you saying that you support it, but go and, like, it takes, like, two seconds, I promise. I hate filling in online forms. I get it. It's so boring and annoying. But you literally just type in your name, and then you, like, tick a box, and, like, it's, ten, it's like, ten seconds. But it would be really cool if, um, if we could have more people. And actually, for she and actually, sorry, it's not. It's a... Um, yeah, it's it's a commitment. It's that's what it is. You go on the website and you make your commitment. Please, if you're a man and you believe in equality and you're one of those cool male feminists that I've been meeting recently, go go and uh, put your name on our website. Keepshit.org. <laughs> I'm a male feminist, but I'm not particularly cool. But that's still counts, that's fine. Right? Okay, sure. We lo like that's fine. Uncool men are welcome too. Okay, we love great. you too. Another another controversial question actually mm. uh, is about the about what. What are you doing to address the discrimination against men mm. or violence towards men from women? Well, first of all, we, we're even acknowledging that it exists mm. because I think people don't think this is a thing. Again, it's like we're not, I don't think in the past we've addressed um, how men are suffering as a result of gender inequality. This has not been part of the conversation, um, but it is. You know, men are the recipients of violence and abuse and discrimination. Um, and I think just acknowledging it, first of all, is, is, is a big step. And then, you know, we're also trying to give them a safe space where they feel like they can talk about these issues, where there previously, you know, wasn't before. And we, we want to try and, you know, help and support, and support them. Mm. Um, we, you know, I think violence against anyone is abhorrent. Um, but just because we're saying it's not right that women are the recipients of violence, we're definitely not um, encouraging violence against men. <laughs> it's definitely that's not, <laughs> it's definitely not how the logic works. Um, yeah, it's, it's equally, equally important. One of the wonderful things in that speech, which I keep going back to, because it affected me quite a lot. I, I, really, you know, I really enjoyed it and I, I, really, I really connected with what you said. But the thing that I think a lot of your fans and people watching this can take away is when you, t you talked about, if not me, then who? Mm. And if not now, then when? Mm. And that's, again, you're sort of underlying the urgency of this. Yeah. Because this is a problem that is happening mm. right now. Mm. And it's not really getting much better at the moment. It's really, I've, it's really interesting. I like hear this a lot. And I've, I've heard my girlfriend say it, and I've heard my guy friends say it too, which is just, you know, oh, I saw this thing happen today, and oh my, it was just so rubbish, and it was just so embarrassing what they were saying. and. So, you know, whatever else, but I just thought, you know, who, who am I, you know, or what good would it do if I said something? It's like it, the, the person that was the recipient of that misogynistic comment or, you know, or whatever it was, it, it'd make a huge difference to them, massive difference to them. Like, could change their day, their month, their year, maybe even their life. Really could. Um, so, don't, don't, ever hear in your own head, who am I to say something? You are a human being, you are a person, you can 100% change the world. Um, and it's small ways, it's everyday ways, it's, it's the little things really count and really matter. And be brave, be brave, be brave. We have a little bit of time for some questions from the audience, if that's all right. So 
we do have anybody who would like to ask a question. Uh, yours was the speediest hand I've ever seen. So. <laughs> that was straight up. The, uh, the guy in the Hogwarts jumper. So brace yourself. OK, I'm braced. Um, wait for the microphone. OK. Hi, Emma. Hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> there we go. I think we're on now. Yeah. Hi, Emma. Uh, I'm Thomas. Um, every time I'm involved in a debate about gender equality, specifically equal pay, uh, the most frequent argument I hear against it is that it shouldn't be fair for women to be paid the same as men. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, because it's more likely for women to be taking time off on maternity leave. Obviously, that's not really fair at all. It's not really fair, fair but what would you have to say to people who have that argument? Gosh. Uh, yeah, I've come, I've, come up across, I've come across this argument a lot. Um, I guess I would just say that maternity leave in this country is uh, yeah. around two months, two or three months. And I don't think in the grand scheme of things that's, that's the kind of amount of time that's, that's really going to hinder a woman from being able to achieve and be incredibly effective in whatever her particular field is. And I think men should be equal partners in, in raising children. I do. I think there shouldn't be an assumption that having children is something that only affects women because men, women need men's support in those circumstances just as much. And I think it's a really unfair assumption to make that it's only women that are going to be sidetracked by raising children. It's one of the most important things as a human being, you know, that you can be involved with, is, is fostering and nurturing a human being. And, and men need to be playing their part too. Um, I don't think it's enough. To, to discriminate against a woman or hold her back or, or, or not to recognize the potential um, that she has. Thank you, Thomas. Great question, thanks. In your Hogwarts jumper. Yeah, great, great, great question. Um, okay, we have loads more. Uh, uh, yes, wavy lady hand there. Yes, you. We should have, we should have name tags above everyone's head. Really. Yeah, we should. Hi. Are we on? Is it working? No. Are we on? Yes. It's there we yes. go. Hello. And hello, I am Sophie. If you had the magic power, what would you change to help women? And what would you convince male employees to support your action? How would I encourage male police to support women in the, in the police force? And how would you convince male employees? Male employees, yeah. Because I am from a business uh, part, mm -hmm. uh, to support your actions. To support, yeah, to support your actions, how would you, oh, how would you convince male employees to support oh. your actions in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a workplace? Gosh, I mean, the pay gap is such a big one. It's like, if you know that a woman is doing exactly the same work that you are, and you know that she's being paid less, it'd be so cool if you said something about it. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be so great. Um, and if you're, a, you know, if you're a business leader, or if you, if you you know, if you have that power at the top of your country, of your company, then um, you know, ask the question: Are the women you're employing being paid the same? And make sure that you are. It's, yeah, make sure that you are. And um, yeah, it's that simple. I suppose really. if there's managers and yeah. bosses watching this, yeah, then they should be. That should yeah. be one of the things they do next week. Yeah, that be please one of the just go through. Just look at. Just look at it. Look at your figures honestly. And, and just see, are, are you paying women the same as men for the same work? Yes, sir, in the purple. You might have to wait some time for this microphone to get passed back here. No, Unless no. you brought your own microphone, in which case you can use that. That would be, that would I've be, come prepared. That would be so cool. I, I knew I'd get the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Okay. Hi, Emma. Uh, Hi. My name's Hirsch. Uh, I wanted to ask you, well, firstly, I'm a big fan of Hermione Granger, but a bigger fan <laughs> of uh, Emma Watson, who is mm. the face for he for she. Thank uh, you. My question essentially is that if you were a man, would you be equally passionate about gender equality? If I was a man? Yes. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. You have, to, you have to think quite hard about this one. If I was a man. <laughs> no. Um, 
my, I, I'd say my brother, actually, weirdly, is more of a feminist than I am. He's, he's pretty passionate. And we look a bit like twins. So <laughs> that, see, it's, I can kind of get myself in that headset. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I would. I definitely would. Um, because it's right. Not because I have a mother or a sister or, you know, or, or whatever. Just, just, because, just because it's right. Are you passionate because you're a man? Good. Yeah. Excellent. Good to see. Uh, yes. Man tie in the front row. Lovely. Hello, lovely, Emma. A lovely I'm a really, tie. Yes. I'm a really big fan of your work. And uh, my question is regarding something that I'm currently studying. And it's uh, regarding gender in the workplace. And it's uh, what would you say are the root causes of gender inequality in the workplace? And how do you think uh, he for she can help overcome this problem? Um, gender equality in the workplace. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've talked a lot about it. We have. Um, you know, even, even though in, in Britain, for example, we, we've passed laws and we've passed legislation, um, there's still a big gap in, in people's minds and people's mindsets. You know, traditional traditions and uh, social change, it, it just just takes time changing the way that people think. It, it's, a, it's a slow process. Um, so it's really asking someone the right question that makes them go, huh, yeah, I guess that does make sense. Or I guess this thing that's happening doesn't really make sense, but I've just accepted it because that's how things have always been. Uh, so I guess it's just questioning, being willing to question things and um, make up your own mind. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have run out of time for <gasps> audience questions. We could be here for I hours. I know, this is terrible. Um, but thank you so much. Um, one final thing from me. Do you think that it's possible in our lifetimes to achieve what you're trying to set out to achieve? Gender equality. Uh, at current rates, no. I will probably be dead. But, I think I'm just going to refuse to die. <laughs> I think I'm just going to be like, no, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go. I, you're not going to get rid of me until I get to see an equal number of female prime ministers and presidents and CEOs and more men that actually feel like it's okay to express how they really feel about things and more fathers that are present in their children's lives and um, you know, and until I see us all not policing and ostracizing each other and oppressing each other and where I live in a world where there just isn't such a narrowly defined definition of masculinity and femininity, I'm just not going to go. Just won't. <laughs> just won't. Just refuse. Um, if someone could scientifically come up with a way for that to happen, <laughs> please, please let me know. Um, Emma would like yeah. to be frozen, quite I'd like to be, yeah, yes. so that I can come back and be alive to, <laughs> to witness a world where there's gender equality. That would be cool. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Emma Watson. Thank you very much. You are a wonderful audience. Yeah, you really were. Thank you so much for everyone that came and sent in and just interacted and engaged with this. It's, it's been amazing. Thank you. And thank you for watching as well. If you've been inspired by what's gone on here today and want to find out more about the campaign and get onto the Heap She Facebook page and, and sign up, pledge your allegiance to it, I, I've certainly been uh, galvanised into it and, I, and I, I am one of them. So. Uh, keep an eye on Emma's Facebook page as well. And thank you so much for watching. Goodbye from Facebook. Thank you so much. Yes, that was great. Thank you thank so you. much. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you.